Well hello internet and welcome to my Euler's Docent function tutorial. This is pronounced Euler, Euler's Docent function. Before, uh, in my previous videos, I explained uh, integer arithmetic, I explained the primeness of numbers, I explained the co-primeness, how to tell whether two numbers are co-prime or relatively prime, I've also explained um, Fermat's little theorem, I've explained integer arithmetic in uh, uh, and modular arithmetic in general. I, I just gave a sort of a quick overview, a scratch on the surface. This time I will be explaining Euler's uh, torsion function, which is important for our understanding of how the RSA encryption algorithm works. Now, I'm assuming you are familiar with prime numbers, with prime number factorization, with the uh, fundamental theorem of arithmetic which says every number can be factored to a product of prime numbers. Remember every integer number, uh, rather every positive integer number can be factored in, uh, can be factored to a product of prime numbers. Enough talking, let's have a, lo have a look at what this torsion function does and what it is in general. So Euler's torsion function, imagine we have a positive integer number n, let's call it n. The phi function, which is Euler's torsion function, the phi function, what it does, it counts the positive integers less than or equal to n that are relatively prime to n. Less than n that are relatively prime to n. So, usually it's written like this, phi, the phi of n, the phi function, this is Euler's torsion function, the phi function is the torsion of n, which is the number of integers less than or equal to n and co-prime to n. Remember the relatively prime or co-prime numbers, how to tell whether two numbers are co-prime? Their GCD needs to be 1. The GCD, the greatest common divisor of those two numbers, needs to be 1. So for example, if I have a number 10, for example, the phi function of 10, or Euler's torsion function of 10, is 4. Why is that? Well, we list the prime, the the integer numbers um, less than the positive integer numbers less than or equal to ten, and at the same time co-prime to n. So positive numbers less than ten are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But the co the ones which are co-prime to ten are one, three, seven, nine. These numbers, uh, if we compute the GCD of any of these numbers with ten, then the result will be one. 2 is not there because the GCD of 2 and 10 is 2, 4 is not there because GCD of, 10 of two, 4 and 10 is 2, 6, 8, likewise the GCD of 6 and, uh, 6 and 10 or GCD of 8 and 10 is 2. So it's not 1, therefore they are not co-prime to 10. So the phi of 10 equals 4, phi of, of 7, the totion of 7 equals 6 because if I list the positive integers, of course 1 and above, so it needs to be more than 1. Uh, it needs to be greater than 1, 0 is not included. Zero, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are all co-prime to 7. I, was, I, was going, I, should, I should say they're not 10. In general, and always remember this rule, please. The phi of p, if p is a prime number, then the phi of p equals p minus 1. So for example, 13 is a prime number. The phi of 13 is... 13 minus 1, i.e. 12. Remember this rule, phi of p equals p minus 1 if p is a prime number. Yes? Again, for example, 11 is a prime number, so the phi of p, the totient of, of, of 11, is 11 minus 1, which is 10. Now, some other interesting things to know about uh, uh, the phi function, that if I have two prime numbers, p and q, and this is at the core of the RSA algorithm, if I have two prime numbers, p and q, the phi function of p times q, the product of, of p times q, and remember now, p and q are uh, um, prime numbers, phi of p and q, p times q, I'm sorry, equals p minus 1 times q minus 1, which is the same as phi of p times 5 of q. So again, phi of p times q is the same as p minus 1 times q minus 1 is the same as Phi, phi of p times phi of q. Remember that p and q are 
uh, prime numbers and here we said that if p is a prime number then phi of p is p minus 1 if we take an example we have two numbers now p and q let's say 11 and 13 they both both 11 and 13 are prime so the phi of 11 times 13 is 11 minus 1 times 13 minus 1 so that's 10 times 12 which is 120 or which is at the, which is at the same time the phi of 11 times the phi of 13 phi of 11 is uh, because 11 is prime so it'll be 11 minus 1 which is 10 13 is prime phi of 13 is 12 which is 13 minus 1 so 10 times 12 is 120 using this rule here always please remember this that the phi of p equals p minus 1 if p is prime and this is the phi function or Euler's torsion, Euler's torsion function in general uh, some other property for example if we raise uh, p to a to power k for example so if p is a prime number and we have a positive integer k which is greater than 0 the phi of p raised to power k so p raised to power k phi of that the torsion function of p raised to power k is p to power k minus p to power k minus 1 so if p for example was 13 which is prime number and k was for example 10 then the phi of 13 to power 10 E equals uh, 13 to power 10 minus 13 to power 9 I hope that makes sense another interesting one is that if M and N are co-prime i.e. the GCD of M and N equals 1 then the phi of M times N is the same as phi of M times phi of N I'm not going to give examples here because I'm assuming this is quite simple for you and always you can look at this example and do something of your own but remember these properties that uh, phi of p raised to power k if p is prime and k is a positive integer is the same as p minus k I'm sorry p to power k minus p to power k minus 1 and here if we have two co-prime numbers if you want to find the phi of the multiplication of the two numbers then it's the same as the phi of the first number times the phi of the second number and this lays the foundation for Euler's theorem let me change the color of that so it's uh, it looks nicely the uh, foundation or the basis of Euler's theorem says that if the GCD of a and n equals 1 then a raised to power phi of n is congruent to 1 mod modulus n remember this I'll come to this in my next video. I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.